Okay, folks, for anybody that don't know, I'm going to try to show you how a hit and miss engine works. Uh, hit and miss, the reason it's called that is because when it misses, it's freewheeling. And uh, when it hits, of course, it's firing. And uh, a couple things first. You notice there's no rocker arm on the intake valve. Now, this, of course, this one's not finished up. This is one I'm in the middle of building. Uh, it uses a soft spring, and it's called an atmospheric valve. So when the piston goes down, it actually pulls the valve open. And, of course, on compression stroke, it uh, holds it back up. And then, of course, when it's firing, there's too much compression or combustion in the chamber for it to open up on its own. So it stays closed when it needs to and opens when it needs to. Uh, your timing's going to be your exhaust valve. And uh, I'll roll it over and let you see how that works. This is our cam. And of course, our roller, rocker arm, valve, exhaust valve. And this is the fly ball governor at the top. And the way this works is when it's running at full RPM, which would be rated RPM, 500, you know, 400, whatever it happens to be rated at, these balls will actually come up. When these balls come up, it operates this linkage, and, and all hit miss engines have different style linkage. This is just something that I have thrown together and I'm not completed with it but but it'll work but when the valve opens and this ball is up it actually latches out when it latches out as you can see the rocker is not opening and closing the valve it's barely touching it but it's staying open all the time so that lets the engine freewheel because there's no compression on it and that's where you get your miss and then when these when the engine turns slow enough for these balls to drop back down it unlatches and goes back to working and it's a pretty simple system that's the way all hit and miss engines work they're all set up in different ways but all of them work the same and I wanted to show you the bow the gears I'm using in this one these are actually uh, Volkswagen Beetle gears and I've extended this fly or this crankshaft and the flywheel one of them is actually off of the bike engine that I built the four-stroke engine and uh, you can see I've got a degree wheel on it. I was doing the distance that the exhaust valve is open. And uh, that's why I've, I've actually got it on the wrong side. So it's not working right, but it didn't matter. I just needed the, the degrees is what I was worried about. And this is another Quincy A4. This is actually the same exact compressor that is on my bike. And of course here is another one. And this one is complete never been uh, taken apart for for my purposes anyway and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear this one down this one's coming back apart and I'm going to do this on video from start to finish build it the combustion chamber I may have to make smaller this is a combustion chamber I made because I wanted a 7-8 spark plug the big spark plug but I'm probably going to have to go either with the 18 or the 14 millimeter, which is the smaller plug. 18 being the little older one, I sort of like it. But uh, I really like the old plug, but there's just no room on these engines. And uh, the valves are so wide in there that it's actually bigger than the cylinder. So your combustion chamber's got to be clearanced inside, and I'll show you all that. And I think that's about it on it. There's not that much to them. Uh, carburetor they don't run they run a fuel mixer the fuel mixer is basically just a venturi with a needle valve and you make it adjustable not adjust your fuel you can set it up and I mean that'll be a simple deal and then for firing I think we're going to use a possibly a roll pin or a, just a tab with a set of points something that that uh, to fire it and you can fire it off the cam which turns half speed of the crankshaft or you can fire it off the crankshaft uh, if you fire it off the crankshaft then you get what's called uh, wasted fire I think it is it's when it fires every every rotation but it only uses it every other rotation but uh, it don't really matter at all it don't hurt a thing but so you can pretty much time it any way you want these the good thing about building one of these engines is you can almost do anything you want to do linkage wise and there's just so many different ways of doing this, but I think you'll enjoy it.
we're gonna start from nothing and, and build it up. I've got the piston and rod out of this one. Uh, haven't done a lot of work, done the head on it, but we'll redo using the other head. And that way you'll be able to see everything goes on. This is all Model T stuff, uh, just welded together. Uh, stainless shaft that I just happen to have. These balls are off of Model T. This stuff here is just fabricated. These pieces was some kind of hinge pieces, but the other two pieces I've just fabricated them. And the fork and uh, put a grease fit down here, or a grease cup, excuse me, to push in grease on that bushing, and then one here to push in grease on this bushing. And I think these was used on possibly the kingpins or uh, part part on a Model T somewhere. I'm not sure. You know, of course, they used them on all different kinds of equipment and machines and stuff, but I think these particular ones was off of a Model T. And I may do something a little different on this rod, you know, cut it off or such. It's hanging down, but I'm in the middle of designing and building it. So, valve, that's Model T. This valve's an Oliver tractor. And uh, just add the guides in. I don't run hardened seats. I mean, you know, everybody is all up on hardened seats, hardened seats, but the, the deal is, is uh, if you don't run it a long time, it's not going to beat down that bad. Uh, anything before the fuel changed from unleaded didn't run hardened seats anyway so it's really not going to matter that much if you know you're real worried about it you can put a lead additive in your fuel and you know that'll make up for that gaskets will make out of uh, graphite and we may or may not run a buzz coil Ford buzz coil on this uh, may make a coil uh, or make a buzz coil out of a regular coil uh, I mean, you can run a magnet, or you could, you know, come up with a million different ways to fire it. It, it. As long as you're firing in time, that's the only important part. And like I said, there's so many different ways of doing these. And, and if you look on the internet, you'll see that there's a lot of different ways. And this one here is just the way that I, way it came together. I don't make any plans before I start on something. I know what I want in my head. I just do it as I go, and whatever it comes out, it comes out. And this is uh, this is actually the exact same compressor and I found that on Craigslist and went and bought it and uh, it actually pumped air it just was slow about it but uh, it'll work out for what I need and we'll get started on it soon but hopefully you understand how that works on the hit and miss it's you know it's really simple it's you know if you don't look at it or don't know or no one's tells you you know it might sound complicated but it's not and then bug gears there, Volkswagen Beetle gears, you can get them all day long on eBay. Uh, that's the ones for the bug. I think the ones for the, the van the, or the Type 2 or Type 3 or something, I think they're all different. But uh, the, the Beetle gears seem to work good. And, you know, keyed them, put them in. I'll show you all that. Show you how I extended the crank. And I may do this one. I've got two flywheels. And they're spoke flywheels. Well, they're not even flywheels. They're, they actually... V belt pulleys off of uh, pump jacks. And I may put put them on here. They're a little bit bigger, which is not a problem. And I think it would look good with them. Uh, you know, I don't mind the V unit. It's you know not a big deal. I'm just building them to run. I'm not really building them for looks anyway. And just like to listen to them run, like most people. And I may leave this intake on this and just see how it sounds, how it looks out for a muffler. And it may work out okay and but we will see and I'll get back a hold of you back back as soon as we get started on it and I think you'll enjoy this and, and I'm gonna try to keep it simple to where you know the minimal work here where you don't have to have a bunch of machinery to do something like this if you want to build one I'll see you next time thank you